The average dieter truly believes that the less they eat, the faster they're going to lose weight. I'm going to say that again because this is how most dieters approach weight loss. Most dieters think the less they eat, the more they can starve themselves, the faster they're going to lose weight. But the research has shown quite the opposite. What the research has shown is that starvation can slow your metabolism down. And I'm going to ask you guys, has anyone in here ever hit a plateau in weight loss? Have you ever, all right, quite a bit of you, have you ever started to lose weight and then noticed that it slowed down? Have you ever wondered what's going on? I mean, it's really interesting, isn't it? You cut your calories. How much weight do you lose the first week? This is a participation workshop. Ten pounds. Oh, thanks. Ten pounds. Ten. Yeah, five pounds the first week. Ten pounds. How much do you lose the next week? Less. Less. Three pounds. How much? How about the next week? Even less. Half, half a pound. So the weight loss slows down. Why does that happen? There's been a lot of research on this subject right here, and it's one of the most important things we can talk about. The reason weight loss slows down is because your body's responding to the environment. They found in multiple studies that your metabolism adjusts to what you're doing. Uh, well, this has never been talked about. You know, when you took high school nutrition, all you ever learned about weight loss uh, was the first law of thermodynamics as, as it applies. You know, calories in versus calories out. If you want to lose weight, just eat less, right? Isn't that what we're all taught? And the less you eat, the faster you're going to lose weight. But dieters have learned through trial and error, usually by the time they come and sit down with us, they've learned the hard way that cutting your calories doesn't always work. At least it doesn't keep working. It worked really good in the beginning, and then for some reason it stopped working. So we're here to answer that very important question. Why doesn't calorie counting always work? Because your metabolism is constantly changing. Now, what are the things that change your metabolism? They found in research your body response to the environment. Now, we know this is true. If you live in a cold environment for an extended period of time, your body climatizes, you learn how to live in a cold environment. If you're in a hot environment for an extended period of time, your body adapts, acclimatizes, you learn to live in a, in a hot environment. Well, what happens if we put you in an environment where there's no food? How does your body respond? You know, we put you on a desert island, there's no food. What happens? How does your body respond to that environment? Starvation. Yeah, it can actually shut its metabolism down. It can slow down the rep, your, your metabolic rate. It can increase production of hormones that help it hold on to fat because it's trying to survive. It's trying to adapt to the new environment. So as you really understand that concept, it's easy to understand how most of the things dieters do to try to lose weight actually damage their metabolism and cause them to plateau. It's just the body's response to starvation. So what are the things that can affect your metabolism? Your body responds to the environment. Hormones. We all know this is true, right? We've heard the ads. If you're not losing weight, get your hormones checked. Well, it's true that hormones affect weight gain and weight loss, but did you know that you can increase production of healthy hormones, decrease production of unhealthy hormones by fixing your nutrition? and that even before taking a drug or having to go meet with a hormone specialist, we can start to stabilize your hormones today just using better nutritional strategy, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. So yes, hormones affect weight gain and weight loss. That's true. But the idea that you need to go get on a drug is not true. Not always, sometimes, but not always. Most of the time, it's not. What else can affect your metabolism? Changes in lean body mass. Mike did an ex excellent job explaining that. If you build muscle, your metabolism speeds up. If you lose muscle, your metabolism slows down. What did they find in research? The average dieter loses muscle during weight loss from, from bad nutritional techniques and from lack of weight training. What else can affect your metabolism? Did you know that your metabolism can be affected by your hydration levels? This is really interesting information. Did you know you can, did you know you can speed up weight loss just by drinking more water? Boy, Mrs. Jones loves learning this, you know, because when, when she wants to speed up weight loss, if it's just as simple as increasing water, and this is a big deal. You know, the average American is dehydrated from day to day. And you'd be blown away how many plateaus we've been able to break just by increasing our clients' hydration levels. Um, another component that affects your metabolism, your pH levels, something most of our clients have never even heard of. But if your body's too acidic, it has a hard time metabolizing fat. So you might ask me, well, what are the things that make my body acidic? Carbonation, lack of sleep, stress, pollutants, coffee. So if you're in the room right now going, oh, great, I'm stressed out all the time, I don't sleep very much, and I love my Diet Coke, there's a chance that your pH levels are so high that your body's so acidic that it's, it's going to have a hard time metabolizing fat, even if you're eating less. Even if you're starving yourself and working out and doing everything else you can think of right, if your pH levels are out of whack, you're going to have a hard time dropping body fat. It's going to be much slower. So how do, we, how do we address this stuff? Does it mean you need to stop drinking carbonation right away? No. But we need to look at the whole picture. We need to look at your sleep schedule, water intake, 
Um, uh, sugars are one of the most acidic thing in the American diet that can slow down weight loss. And it's this other stuff that most dieters have never thought of when they want to lose weight that make the biggest difference. You know, in, in my career, I've sat in front of thousands of dieters who said, you know what, I can't lose weight. No matter what you do, I'm not going to lose weight because I've already tried starvation. I'm already exercising every day. And if I'm not losing weight now, what the heck are you going to do for me? And we're able to, as, as professionals, find other areas to positively increase your metabolism and start producing weight loss rapidly. That's why this information is so important. Because if calorie counting by itself was good enough, more people would be losing weight on their own. You know, I tell my clients that all the time. I say, if, cal if starvation was all it took to lose weight, my job wouldn't even exist. More people would be hitting their goals. Think about it. All you do is have to download a, a smart app to your iPhone, start counting your calories, and everyone would be hitting their goals. But most people who've, who've tried that and the point counting systems and the starvation systems and the crash diets and the things that Mike mentioned have learned the hard way that for some reason that doesn't keep working. So we have to be okay with learning some better principles. We need to be open to learning some better techniques because we do not have to um, get plateaus. We do not have to give up on our fitness goals. And, and first of all, to illustrate the point a little bit better, I'm not saying calorie counting doesn't work. Calorie counting is the first and more, most important principle in weight loss, absolutely. I'm saying it's not good enough by itself. I'm saying we need to be aware of this other stuff so we can have fast, consistent results, avoid plateaus, and maintain the results for life. So, so why else doesn't calorie counting all, always work? What does the research show? Um, not all calories are, are, are the same. Did you know that it takes more calories to burn some foods than others? It takes more calories to burn um, solid foods than liquid foods. It takes more calories to burn raw foods than cooked foods. This in nutrition is known as the thermogenic value of food. Foods that are more thermogenic in nature, you burn more calories digesting. Foods that are less thermogenic in nature, you burn less calories digesting. So wouldn't you want to know this? You'd be blown away how often we've been able to increase Mrs. Jones' weight loss, speed it up, um, just by changing the form of some of the foods that she's eating. And I'll give you an example. Uh, most people know that egg whites are good for weight loss. It's a complete protein. An egg white has 16 calories. It always has 16 calories. That never changes. The calories never change. But if an egg white is scrambled, you burn one calorie digesting it. If it's hard boiled, you burn 17 calories digesting it. Good information. So we can actually change the form that some of the food is in and speed up Mrs. Jones' weight loss. You burn more calories digesting a, a protein like chicken breast than you do a protein shake. Now when Mrs. Jones learns that she can lose faster, lose weight faster, by getting rid of the protein shake that she didn't even like, you know, she slams her fist on my desk and says, I've been drinking that dang slim fast shake for the last two years, I don't even like it, and I can lose weight faster eating chicken breast, I actually like chicken breast. Um, and so th this is important information that goes far beyond just calorie counting. Um, you can absolutely lose weight faster with more whole foods and supplementation. You can burn, uh, lose weight faster with more good green vegetables that are not blended. So there goes the juicing industry. You know, just put everything in a blended drink it. Not a bad idea. You don't lose any nutrients, but you're not going to lose weight very quickly. Um, why else doesn't calorie counting always work? All foods have different glycemic values. Anyone in here familiar with the glycemic index? I raise your hands. Good. I hope so. Uh, glycemic index is one of the most, is very important in nutrition. The glycemic value of, um, applies to carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are fruits, vegetables, starches, bread, pasta, rice, things like that. In your information packet, can I have one of those? We actually have a page. I promised you good stuff, right? So just open the packet. This, this page is going to help you out. Um, this page in the very back talks about the glycemic index. The glycemic index as it applies to carbohydrates is, is essentially the sugar value of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates that are low on the glycemic index are slow digesting. Carbohydrates that are high on the glycemic index are fast digesting, so they're more likely to be stored as fat. Carbohydrates that are low glycemic, uh, not only um, are they slow digesting, but they keep your blood sugar balanced, so they start to stabilize hormone production. You have even blood sugar levels, therefore even insulin levels, later even hormone, uh, cortisol levels and, and lipton levels, so you don't have uh, increases in appetite. It's very easy to control your appetite. So low glycemic foods will speed up weight loss and they will also lower cravings.